This is the Vaderer 12.8 volt 460 amp hour battery. In this video I'm going to unbox it and share with you how I'm going to use it. Let's take a little look at the Vaderer 12.8 volt 460 amp hours battery. This thing weighs about 105 pounds and in other words it's not light. Ugh, I can lift it but you got to make sure you don't hurt your back doing so but it does have these really handy carrying handles right here and uh you know obviously lift with your knees when you're going to be picking it up so anyhow the uh battery i'm going to talk a little bit about it here let me tilt it up just so you can kind of get a look i'm going to talk a little bit about it i'm not going to take it apart because it says right on here don't take it apart so right on the back it gives you a caution do not disassemble so uh, i've i've heard of people taking apart to look inside. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to follow instructions. So you have a little sort of power button on right here. Power button off. And um, there's a, a panel here that you, know, you can take the screws off if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that. So my purpose in getting the battery is I have a shed that is kind of far behind the house and I don't want to run electricity out to it. This is going to power my shed. I'm going to set up some lights, um, some put in some outlets, things like that. But let me tell you a few details about this and then we're going to do a little test on it. So the battery itself is 12.8 volts, 460 amp hours. The charging voltage is 14.2 to 14.6. The energy is 5,888 watts. The max continuous charging current is 300 amp. And the max continuous discharging current is 300 amp. Recommended charge current is 92 amp. Max load inverter power, 3,840, which I'm going to be getting um, an inverter closer to that. I currently don't have one, but for the project of, of setting up my shed as a power for power, I'm going to be getting something like that for it. Now, for me, because I'm going to have this out in my shed, this is actually an important detail. The operating temperature... So for charging, you want it to be between 0 and 50 degrees Celsius. That would be 32 and 122 Fahrenheit. For discharging, you want it to be between a minus 20 Celsius and 60 Celsius, which would be negative 4 Fahrenheit to 140. That's actually good for me because there's going to be all kinds of temperatures out there in my shed. Uh, I'll just bring it in in the middle of winter for storage because, you know, you don't want it to just be out there in those frigidly cold temperatures. They don't want you to have it, you know, there is a protection cutoff below negative four Fahrenheit and below negative 20 Celsius. The um, terminal types over here are M8s. The dimensions overall, you're looking at about 18 and three quarters inches this way, 10 and three quarters and, and nine and three quarters when you're looking at height and width. So there is a battery management system enclosed in the battery, so you don't need any extra wiring. It's built with the Life PO4 battery cells that are engineered to deliver superior performance and longevity. The battery voltage stays above 12.5 volts at 90% discharge. Maintenance-free, non-spill, you know, perfect replacement or upgrade for a traditional lead acid battery. So, it, and I want to mention this, it does have a 10-year warranty from the time it's manufactured. Not, not the time of purchase, but the time it's manufactured. That's what it says in the owner's manual. So, you also need to operate it within the company's, the manufacturer's specifications. If you obviously are using it outside the scope of its specifications, that would vo potentially void the warranty. So one thing to um, think about or be aware of when it, when it comes to charging is that, you know, based on the characteristics of lithium ion phosphate batteries, the voltage measured by all lithium phosphate batteries is not the real voltage of the battery. Therefore, after charging and discharging the battery from the power source, the voltage of the battery will gradually drop to its real voltage. If you need to test the real voltage of the battery, you got to discharge and, and disconnect the power supply and test its voltage after putting it aside for about 15 minutes. 
So when you're storing it, you want it really kind of room temperature is ideal for, for storage. You don't want it in real frigid or overly hot conditions. They do recommend that you store it in a fireproof box and away from children. So one recommendation they make is if you're going to be storing it for a while, you know, keep it around 50% charge, but then give it a little bit of, give it a charge about every three months if you're not using it for a long period of time. All right, all this talk, I'm starting to feel a little bit thirsty and I'm taking these off because my uh, inverter uh, clamps don't fit in this little port. So it's just taking these two screws off. Now this is a 750 watt and, and uh, inverter that I picked up a while back just for a project I was doing. But I got a little coffee maker sitting right here. I'm going to see if I can brew myself a little coffee off of this thing. I mean, come on. I'm getting thirsty around here. So let me talk a little bit about some of the uses that I'm going to have for this. Um, right now, it's just too cold outside to go and put my project together. I'm going to wire my shed with electrical outlets and lights, light switches and all that. Um, I'm going to use this as my power source. And I'm going to get some solar panels to charge it and uh, just charge it up with to keep it charged. But I'm going to be running lights, probably some drills, things like that off of it. You could use this like in an RV to run your, you know, um, you know, microwave, things like that. I know people run their uh, air conditioner off of it. You could also put these in a series. So if you had like four of them, you could put them in a series to have longer battery life for powering all your stuff. So this is like an ideal situation for like your campers, but also like your abnormal projects. Like for me, having a shed out back that's just like a hundred yards from the house, I don't have a good way of running electric out to it. So I'm gonna use this to power everything. You could, you know, put something like this in a workshop. Otherwise is, is really what I'm getting at. But the point is, like, when would you want to use this? Those are the types of projects. If you're going out on a camping trip and you're worried about having, you know, long an op opportunity for having power, let's say it's going to be a remote trip and you're not going to have a place to plug in your RV. You charge your battery up, bring some solar panels, you can put them on the roof of your RV, charge this thing up. Those are the types of things you want to think about, like, what am I going to be using my battery for? But I wanted this battery because it's a beast. I mean... It's a workhorse, and um, I'm just going to, you know, when the weather breaks, I'll probably do some more videos of the actual shed with this hooked up, with the whole lighting system, things like that. So you have to stay tuned to my channel for those details. Um, that's going to be a couple months out, though, until the weather breaks. But in the meantime, I'm getting everything I need for the project, and starting with this battery. So, you, you know, I've shared some of the details. You can look into it. I'll also provide a link for the, you know, purchasing one of these batteries if you're looking for one. But those are the overall details. I hope you will check it out. And if it's something that you're looking into, uh, this type of battery is really, it is a workhorse. And, you know, it does come with the carrying handles. But you know what I'm actually going to do? I have a little hand cart that you can just slide right under here and just wheel it around. That's going to make it easier. Um, be mindful that this is a heavy battery. I mean, 105 pounds, 47 and a half kilograms. So, um, so that's some of the details. There are, there is phone numbers on the back of the battery. If so down here on the back, you have some phone numbers. You have your warning stuff here. There is a QR code on the back, so you can get gain more information very easily. It does come with an owner's manual. And so those are the basic things. Stay tuned to my channel so you can see how it ends up working out for me come this summer, and I get this hooked up to power my shed. Thanks for tuning in to this video. Until next time, take care and God bless.